Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are and whenever you are around the world. Welcome to this edition of the On Pilgrimage Through the Scripture podcast, the Bible teaching program that takes you chapter by chapter and verse by verse through the Scriptures. I'm your pilgrimage leader, Mike Queller, and in this podcast, we will look at Christian ethics, and in particular, what is ethics and types of ethical systems. Ethics are important to Christianity and to your Christian life, so we're going to take a look at that. We'll take a break from our normal verse-by-verse uh, teaching and take a look at some of these ethical systems and how they apply to us. But first, a word from our sponsor. Join the pilgrimage. Check out our Gab, MeWe, and Facebook pages on Pilgrimage Through the Scripture. That's the place where you can find our notes and outlines, where you can post your questions and get responses to them. Or you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, join the pilgrimage there and see uh, all of our podcasts and get notifications of our podcasts as they come out for you. But now, what is ethics? Ethics is answers the question of, if the world is the way that it is, how should we then live? Uh, if you, and for, you know, in secular, the secular philosophical world, they uh, sought to answer the question without reference to God, as, we, as we've seen in our uh, studies through Romans. But uh, in the, we, the question still uh, is important for Christians. You know, given the fact that we're Christians, how should we then live? What should we do? How should we behave? Uh, but ethics, uh, if, you think, uh, if you look at it, considers questions such as, what's the right thing to do in a per- particular situation? I have, I'm dealing with this person. How should I manage that? How should we treat people? What's good and evil? What's right and wrong? What's justice? All these are important questions that are covered in ethics, and we're going to take a look at that in our study through ethics. Now, so this is important for Christians, as we mentioned before. We have, you've seen, if you've been around, if you've been a Christian for a while, you've seen various ideas advanced for how to behave in, a, in Christian society. Those of us who are older, uh, and maybe, it, maybe you're still in this, but uh, there's the fundamentalist Christian checklist morality. Uh, don't smoke, drink, dance, chew, or hang around with girls that do. You know, if you follow this list of do's and don'ts, then you're good. And that's their way of doing it. Then there's Arminian, what I call Arminian perseverance. That's where, ah, oh, you're good. Quit your sinning, don't sin, uh, don't do any of that. Uh, you know, live perfect lives and, and you're going to be fine. Or the opposite, antinomianism. Law? What law? Well, I've been saved by Christ. I don't need any more law. I'm going to do whatever I want because Christ saved, uh, Christ died for my sins, paid for all my sins, and therefore it doesn't really matter what I do because Jesus paid it all. Well, also, there's David Platt's book, Radical, which, if you take a misinterpretation of what Platt said, uh, sell all you have, give to the poor, go out to be a uh, missionary in, in outer Mongolia. Or Michael Horton's Ordinary, which is most of the Christian life is lived in, by ordinary people in ordinary places, doing ordinary things, witnessing for Christ in an ordinary manner. And so we're going to look at this, and we're going to say we're going to look at at these, and we're going to ask the question: Is are any of these correct according to the scripture, or are none of them correct? And there's a different way of, of living. So we're going to look at all of these different things as we go through our study in this area. Now there have been several secular approaches to doing this, and they're called deontology, consequentialism, virtue ethics, social contract theory. All of these uh, are different ways that the, the secular world has tried to discuss, answer the question, how should we then live without having to uh, reference God? Now, deontology comes from the word deon, uh, which is, means duty. And the focus is on doing what you have a duty to do. Follow the rules. So, like, uh, so, so we have here an external focus. If you follow the rules, you're doing well. 
It doesn't matter really what you feel or think inside. As long as you follow the rules, you're behaving properly. Now, to, in order to follow the rules properly, you have to do it from a disinterested standpoint. You remember that, you know, in the old, it, to use a New Testament example, the Pharisees would uh, avoid taking care of their, uh, their relations or their parents by declaring something Corban. And so... I said, well, I can't, Mom, Dad, I'd love to take care of you, but I've given this all to God, and so I, I can't give you any of it because it all belongs to, it all belongs to God. So that's an interest. So they got to keep everything, and they didn't have to take care of their relatives, and they got to live the way that they wanted to live. So that's not a disinterested standpoint, according to deontology. Deontology means you cannot get, you cannot benefit in any way from this at all. You just have to follow the rules because it's the rules. The other thing about deontology is consequences are irrelevant. You follow the rule, and if people die, people die. If everything goes bad, at least you say, hey, I followed the rule, and I was totally disinterested because everything turned, everything went in the dumper, and, but I followed the rules, and so therefore it's good. Now, a guy named Immanuel Kant was the first one to develop this, and he developed the idea of the categorical imperative. And basically, there were four things to the categorical imperative. We act uh, according to the, the idea that if this were employed universally, would it be a good thing? Second, we treat humanity as an end, not as a means to an end. We act according to our will, not according to any outside influence. In other words, we do what we think is the rule, not what somebody imposes on us. And we can create our own. And basically, you act as if you were creating laws in your own kingdom. So that is, you know, creating your own uh, morality. Now, I've, I've given you a, a link here that, for YouTube that you can look at if you want to really get into, you know, finding out really what Kant had to say about uh, deont deontological ethics. You can see that right there. Consequentialism, another, the, an, the second form, is where we judge things not by following rules, but by what happens when we do them. So uh, the greater balance of good or evil is the judge here. So I did this act, and most peop more people than not had something good happen to them. Or... I got more good than evil out of this. So, for example, uh, you could think of it this way. I cheated on the exam and I got an A. Therefore, the consequence for me is good. Now, if you take a longer-term viewpoint, well, the consequence is going to be bad because you won't know the material on the exam, and so therefore you won't do well in your future career, but there it is. That, and basically, the idea, the, the idea of good is defined by maximization of pleasure or minimization of pain, and the aggregate happiness to, you know, how can, can we provide happiness to more people? The, what provides the majority more people, the majority uh, happiness, uh, is, is the good. Again, this is another one that's externally focused. It doesn't matter what's going on inside of you as long as what comes out uh, benefits the most people. Now, there are variations of this in addition to the individualist uh, act consequentialism that I just talked about. There's state consequentialism, what's good for the state versus individuals or groups. There's egoism for me and me alone. So that's consequentialism. For more information, you can look at this YouTube and they'll, give you, they'll take you through 15 minutes and they'll tell you more about this. Social contract theory arises from the idea of the social contract. Now, this is from Thomas Hobbes and uh, John Locke, and it's the foundation of the American uh, political system. Basically, what it is is people decide that they're going to give up some autonomy to submit to a common law and authority, which has the right to enforce that law. And so, and in this system, we agree as people with what is the correct way to behave. So typically, the majority rules here. But it's not based on consequences, it's based on what we agree to. So if we agree to stop at red lights, then that's the way that we'll behave. We'll stop at red lights. If we, believe, if we agree that we're going to enslave a certain class of people, then 
we agree that we ins that that's what the good thing is to do. Again, it's externally focused um, here as well. We what you may agree, disagree, whatever with the with the social contract, but you will we will behave according to it. For more information, here's another YouTube where you can watch that. Finally, virtue ethics. And virtue ethics is actually different from the other three ethical systems that we've seen here. It's internally focused, and it's based on character. The focus is achieving whatever the desired object of human existence is. Now, if you I'm going to tell you, talk to you about Aristotle here, but there's also Confucianism, Confucianism and Buddhism. Uh, our others have virtue ethic systems. Uh, we're going to look at this, but basically we're going to look at the Western virtue ethics, which is uh, Aristotle. Aristotle thought that the purpose, the end of, end of life is, what he, in the Greek, eudaimonia, meaning happiness or flourishing or living as fully a human existence as possible. In other words, uh, what we're trying to do here is to be completely human and be as, as good a human as we can possibly be. So, and the way that you do that, the way that you become a fully, as fully human as possible is to live according to virtues. And so Aristotle uh, listed 12 different virtues. He listed four cardinal virtues. Uh, prudence or practical wisdom, courage, temperance, justice, or righteous indignation. And these were the, these were the foundational disciplines on which, foundational virtues on which all the others um, uh, were founded. And the most important one was, was prudence or practical wisdom. This was how you knew how to apply the different virtues. And, and then the other virtues that he listed where liberality, uh, are you generous, magnificence, you know, do you live in a way that inspires uh, emulation, magnanimity, ambition, patience, friendliness, truthfulness, wit wittiness, modesty. These are the various virtues that, that he suggested, uh, if you put all together, creates, uh, gives you the ability to live as fully a human existence as possible. Now, the object, according to Aristotle, was to live, uh, is to have a golden mean of each virtue. In other words, if, let's talk about courage. The extreme on one end is rashness. Don't care what the risk is. I'm just going ahead and doing it anyway. The other is, the last one, the, on the other side is cowardice. Uh, you know, being afraid to do anything. So the mean between rashness and and uh, cowardice is courage, and that was the what you were supposed to strive through, strive for in the virtue of courage. And so then, practical wisdom would say how to balance courage, temperance, justice, um, etc., against each other in order to make the correct moral decision. Uh, for that point, you want more information? We've got a link here uh, to another great YouTube on this. So that covers our uh, discussion of an overview of virtues. Uh, please check out our Gab, MeWe, and Facebook pages on Pilgrimage Through the Scripture. Check out the notes and outlines for that. Uh, join the pilgrimage and on Pilgrimage Through the Scripture, and uh, we will uh, we'll have additional topics on ethics as we come through. Thank you, and... Uh, Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.